preaching today, what, what you're going to hear today is more than just a sermon. This is a prophetic declaration over you, your house, and this house. I believe this is a timely word. If you're in this building, if you're watching online right now, this, you are at the right place. Man, Mark, you are right the right place. Mark said it. You are at the right place because there's a word for you for this season, for this moment. And here's the word. The, the Bible says in the second book of Samuel, chapter 3, and verses 1. I'm just going to read one verse. And I believe everything God wants to say to you is, in, is in, enclosed in this verse. Are you ready? Second Samuel, chapter 3, and verse 1. It says like this. There was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Mm -hmm. But David grew stronger and stronger. While the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Here's the, here's the prophetic word. I know for some of you, you've had a rough year, two years, maybe three years. But I'm here to let you know. It's been a long journey to get here. But the promise, because you belong to Christ. And Christ is the seed of David. It means that the blessing of David's house was passed on to the life of Jesus. And now that we are in Jesus, the promise is this, the war has been long over your family. The trials and the struggles and the oppression and the depression and the anxiety have been long. But the promise is you're gonna get stronger and stronger I'm going to preach this until somebody gets it in their spirit. God is saying all the hell you've been through, you're getting stronger and stronger. Simultaneously, every demonic attack is growing weaker and weaker. Some of you shouldn't be here right now. But look at you clapping your hands, lifting up your hands, and singing your song. I declare over this house, you're getting stronger. And I'm going to give you 10 seconds of my preaching time to give God a praise. You're getting stronger, baby. I'm going to preach this until you get it in your spirit. You're getting stronger, baby. But I feel weak. You're getting stronger, baby. Somebody give him one more big shout of praise. Getting stronger. Getting stronger. I'm going to put some substance into this. Before that, though, take, take one hand, put it over your chest. Whew. I feel God's presence in this place. Father, thank you for your goodness, your grace, mercy, and love. Oh, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord. And what a moment to be in your presence. Now I want you to repeat after me, church. Just say, eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mouth to confess all the good things that Christ has already prepared for me. Now since we're clappers, you got to clap your hands one more time and if you're ready to get what belongs to you. Amen. High five two or three people. And just tell them you're getting stronger, baby. You're getting stronger. You're getting stronger. You're getting stronger, brother. You're getting stronger, brother. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. There was a long war against David's house. And I need to inform you that there is always an aggressive all assault attack over your life and over your family and over your children. But God's promise to us is that in those times of trials, he promises to make you stronger and stronger. You see, he might not take 
the trouble away, but he'll make you strong through the trial. He might not take the sickness away immediately, but he will make you stronger and stronger as the days go by. How many are a witness that you didn't think you were going to make it through some things, but God held you with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm? And the Bible teaches us that David's house was under attack by Saul because Saul knew that something amazing was coming to David's house. Can I let you know that the indication of the hell that you've been through is the indication and affirmation that there's something powerful over your life, over your family, and over your children. So pastor, what do I do during this time? Let me tell you what, what God has shown us over the six years that we've been here. And I know, I know it's been six years and, and it's not a lot for some people. But man, when you're in it, man, it, it, feel, it feels that way, man. It, it, it feels that way. But, but this is what I learned through the word of God. And this is what I've learned and I've been able to get and glimpse from God as we've traveled and journeyed six years. Number one, I want to let you know, don't give up. Whatever it is, don't give up. You are exactly where you need to be, where God wants you to be, and your season is not over. It's actually just getting started because you're getting stronger. God is telling somebody that was ready to throw in the towel on your marriage, don't give give up somebody is here and you are getting ready to throw on the towel three throw in the towel over your children i'm here to let you know don't give up why you're getting stronger and stronger in the name of jesus the Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 38 through 39 and he also says my righteous ones will live by my faith. But if fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. Look at what God says about you. But we are certainly not of those who are held back by fear and perish. We are among those who have faith and experience true life. This is what Paul is saying through the, through the Hebrews, through the Hebrew scriptures. It says, uh, we are not the type of people that look back and shrink back. We're not the type of people that go back. We're the type of people that uh, come hell and high water. We're going to move forward in the name of Jesus. Uh, so I'm here to speak life into somebody that feels like things are coming to an end don't you give up because God's going to make you stronger and stronger through every trial can I get a witness today that God's strength is over you this is not the season to retreat this is the season to take him to take back everything that belongs to your household this is not the season to be chill and just kind of relax no 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 this is the season to walk in God's favor and God's promises so don't you quit those church don't quit people that are serving don't quit people that are trying to throw in the towel don't don't quit why you're getting stronger and stronger every day somebody give God praise number two Number two, so we understand that, that the reason why David's house grew stronger and stronger is because no matter what came to David's life he never gave up but he always pursued God's presence he always was running after God's presence number two this is for somebody that's here today number two you've got to stay in the house you got to stay in the fight you got to you you cannot shrink back you got to stay in the house and by the house I mean not your house so oh I gotta go home I'm, I'm. Stay in my house. No, no, no. When David speaks of God's house, he always makes reference to God's presence. So how do I get stronger and stronger? The first thing is I don't give up. The second thing is I stay in God's presence. There is no substitute for God's presence. I'm going to say it one more time. There is no substitute for God's presence. God's presence is everything in us. 
We need God's presence. If, we, if it's anything we need, we need more of God's presence in our life. Stay in the house. Stay in God's presence. You are exactly where you need to be, where God wants you to be. Tell the person next to you, you're exactly where you need to be right now. Because some of them struggle to get here today. Some of you drove from really far, Orange County, Los Angeles, the inland, really deep in the inland, over there by the boondocks. I get it. And, and, and it was cold this morning. You didn't want to get up. And you wanted to stay home and prepare the meal for, for, for whatever game's happening right now that nobody really cares about. But, but, uh, but uh, you know, if you're like me, you really don't care. Maybe the halftime show just a bit, just, you know. <laughs> But stay in God's presence. You made it here. You're exactly where you need to be because you're getting stronger. And this is interesting because, because sometimes it's difficult to stay. I believe that there's more people that quit than more people that stay. And they abort God's blessing before it comes because you weren't able to resist enough to stay and watch God's goodness. I want to talk to a church today that understands it's important to stay until you see God's goodness over your life. You're exactly where you need to be. You're saying, Lord, but it hurts. So it, 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 I get triggered every time I come to church. Or I, I get, well, let, let me tell you what I learned at three o'clock in the morning. The Lord woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and he gave me this word and he, and, and, he, and he said, successful failure. That's all the Spirit said. Successful failure. And I said, Lord, I am not smart enough to understand the mysteries of what successful failure is because it's a paradox. It's either you're successful or you're a failure. And there's this, this like, contradiction are you successful are you failure so I did my Google diligence and I, I went up you know, I did I said well what does the spirit say I said maybe Google can tell me so so I looked it up and to my to my to my surprise it is one of the six phases of muscle growth in your body so I started reading on it I promise you I'm not smart enough to come up on this on my own it's the sixth step of muscle growth in your body for those of you who love the gym. Some of us don't like the gym. I'm allergic to the gym. I start breathing hard. I start sweating. I want to vomit sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? It's like I walk in that and it's like I'm allergic to that stuff. It's just, it's not me. But some of you know what, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Successful failure is the place where a bodybuilder or a, an athlete exercises so much that his muscles begin to tear. And the point is this, you don't grow muscle until pain and tear happens. The point is to get your body to tear muscle. So that when you rest, the, the body begins to produce more strength. So whenever you're at the gym, all those uh, gym people that love the gym, right? And you start feeling exhausted. You know what I'm talking about? And, and you're going for the last rep and you're saying, I can't do it anymore. I feel like my biceps are tearing. That's the indication that through the pain, the muscle is actually growing. So I'm here to tell somebody that all the tearing and all the tears and all the pain that you have experienced, it sounds and it feels like failure. But God's word says you're actually getting stronger oh I know I'm not talking to everybody but I'm talking to somebody in the balcony it felt like pain last year I went through more loss than I did gain I had more questions than I had answers and everything was against me but the word of God is coming to tell you you're not tearing up you're getting stronger baby you're getting healthier baby your faith is growing because the gym of life 
is what builds your faith. But if you can agree with me for a moment, when you're, when you're in that, it doesn't feel good. Some of you are a little bit sick in the head, like it feels so good. No, it does not. <laughs> you get to the place where I just, I love pain. You crazy, like I love pain. Stop it. But what you have learned to do is embrace and get a different perspective. And I'm giving you the perspective. The reason why you're training your brain to adapt to pain is because you know that the pain is worth you getting stronger. Everyone shout successful failure. As we reach failure during our last set, the muscle fibers become completely fatigued. Microscopic tears, micro tears is what it's called, occur in the my myofilaments, the smallest muscle fiber bundles in your muscles. And then you go into repair and growth. The post-workout repair process is when your muscles start to grow. The body repairs the micro tears by adding amino acids. I'm going biology and scientific for all you nerds out there that love, that, that need, that need some, some biology in order to believe in God. I'm telling you there's a spiritual application to all the hell you've been through. It begins, it's a, it begins to, it causes them to grow in size. A and here's what the Lord told me to tell you. I know you're tired. I know you've been through tears. And I know that you have been through pain. But if you could only see what the tearing and tiredness is doing inside of you, you're not getting weaker. You're getting stronger as things tear and pain comes. But I'm here to let you know, greater is he that is in you than everything that can come against you. I need a church that believes it. See this, if you've never been through anything, this doesn't mean anything to you. But if you've been through a divorce, if somebody walked away, if somebody left your life, if you got pink slipped, if you lost a business, if you lost your 401k and you're going crazy and you don't know what to do, I'm letting you know you're getting stronger. Look what the Bible says. I got to hurry. I got to let the Bible says. I love the word of God. Uh, James chapter 1 verses 2 through 5. Look at what the Passion Translation says. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 5. Wow, this is powerful. My fellow believers. Tell the person next to you. He's talking about you. My fellow believers. When it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties. See it as an in invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Whew. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of, everyone shout endurance. endurance. Yeah, that means you can keep going. That means you can take a licking and keep on ticking, baby. That's what it means. Yeah. Watch this, and then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lack. So everything you're going through is getting you to the place where nothing missing and you're lacking nothing. Nothing is broken in your life. Watch this. Let's keep reading. You guys good? All right. All right. Watch this. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. Sometimes I think some people are just dumb because they just don't ask for it. Just 
Lord, make me wise. And he says, I'll give it to you. Watch this. This is my favorite part. Keep reading with me, okay? Watch this. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures. But he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. <laughs> Can you put the scripture back up? I, I, I want this to sink in. Because if you're new here and you're new to church and you're saying, man, God's getting ready to scold me for all my failures and all my mistakes. That's not what his word says. So I'm going to read it to you one more time so that if you have it in your head, you can drop it down to your heart. Because some of you can't get up because you feel like a failure. Some of you, you can't get up because somebody spoke a word ill over you and you started believing their word against God's word. And the Bible says that we've got to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. We've got to make sure that we take into captivity everything that does not align to God's word and God's will and make it obey God's word. And this is what he says. He says, look, look what he says. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you. He's not ready to scold you over your failures, but he will. He will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. How many are grateful for God's grace over your life? Yeah. So how do I get this? You got to stay in the house. Psalms 92, 13 and 14 says planted in the Lord's house. They will grow in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit even when they're old. We don't call people old here. We call them classics. classics. See, a classic gets, gets more valuable with age. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a classic out here, just praise God. It says, even if they're old in age, I'm here to let somebody know who feels like you're too old. Your season's just getting started. And if I can speak into your life, we need your wisdom. We need your prayers. Don't cut us out because we don't do things the way you did them. No. We're pursuing God's presence too. And, and you have a lot. I'm talking to the older folks. You have a lot to offer this generation. I, I, can, I can tell you right now, my, man, my grandmother... She'll catch the Holy Ghost anywhere. <laughs> Some of you that don't know the church, I don't know what that is, but it sounds exciting. It's, it's like when we can, we can be crossing the street and she'll just be thinking of God's goodness and oh, Rabba Sataya Baba. I said, Grandma, you all right? She's like, I just, I just, I'm thinking of God's goodness. And, and I'm like, Oh, Lord. And, and I said, God's goodness. Well, we're just walking, crossing the street. That's why, Robert, she told me that not too long ago, she goes, That's why. You know how many women my age can't even walk anymore? But I'm walking across the street. You understanding? I got a reason why. I've got a. Don't you. Don't you think your time has passed? Our generation needs you. The Bible says that even if you're at old age, you will be filled with vitality and have many leaves. In other words, you will produce life even at your age. But you've got to stay in God's house. And then number three, and I'm done with this. You guys doing okay? All right. Number three, you've got to praise while you wait. Your first incline is to stop praising when trials come. Your, your, your first decision is, I ain't going to church today. And you've got to say, man, I've been in this long enough to know how this works. 
But there comes a moment in your life when you understand that when trials come, I don't stay away from God's house. I run to God's house. And I will praise him while I wait on him. Because if there's anything the enemy wants to do to weaken your faith is he'll start by weakening your praise. Because if he can weaken your praise, he'll weaken your faith. But if you can find a place where you can praise God in the middle of any circumstance, all of a sudden, two things begin to happen simultaneously. Number one, you get stronger. And number two, the devil gets weaker. David was known to be a worshiper. David was known to be a praiser because he knew that his strength and his ability did not come from him but it came from God. So I'm here to let somebody know the enemy has come against you. But when you begin to praise God and you begin to be grateful for the things you do have, you don't concentrate on what you lost. You concentrate on what you still have. You don't concentrate on what the thing, the thing that the enemy took. No, no, no. You concentrate, you concentrate and you focus on the fact that you still got a voice and you still got a praise. And when this happens in your life I'm here to tell somebody your house is going to get stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus so before I end my message today I'm going to give somebody 10 seconds to give God a praise because you should have gave up but you didn't the divorce should have took you out but it didn't you lost the business and it should have took you out but it didn't they walked out on you when you needed them the most but you didn't lose your faith somebody give God praise while you wait come on come on praise him like you believe he's worthy praise him like you believe God's goodness has been here for six years please stand with me Isaiah 40 verses 29 through 39, 31 it says like this he gives power to the faint he gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall yeah yeah life will hit you and you'll grow tired and weary and you'll stumble and fall sometimes but those who wait those who hope in the Lord they will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint I love this verse because it's contradicting to human progress you see, when you rely on God's strength, He flips the script. He makes you fly before you can run. And He'll have you run before you can walk. You notice the sequence of it? He didn't say you'll walk, then you'll run, then you'll fly. No, no, no. He says, I'm, I'm going to elevate you. So that you have a different perspective of life now. Because if I keep you on the ground, the trials of life will eat you up so the first thing I need to do when you're weak is bring you up to my level so that you can see from my point of view that I work out all things for your good and then after you got my perspective you can start to run and then you can start to walk 
because now you're ready to face every challenge that comes to your life that is what God's strength does how many are grateful for God's strength over your life Philippians 4 4 rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice 1 Corinthians 15 57 says the Passion Translation says but we thank God for giving us victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus the anointed one he promises you and I victory can you lift your hands right where you are in the name of Jesus